Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's see how we actually use Gauss's law. We're going to use a very simplistic example, but at least it shows us how to use Gauss's law, and then we can use that, of course, for much more complicated scenarios later on. You'll see, well, why do we even use Gauss's law for this? We don't really have to, but it's a good way to at least show you how it's used. Let's say that we have a charge, a point charge, 10 microcoulombs, and we want to know the electric field at three different locations, here, here, and here, at a distance of, let's say, R1 is at a distance of 2 meters, R2 is a distance of 4 meters, and R3 is a distance of 6 meters away from the point charge. What is the strength of the electric field in each, on each of those three locations, or at each of those three locations? The way we do that is by drawing a Gaussian surface around it. So what we need to do is make sure that the charge remains at the center of the sphere, because remember, a Gaussian surface in this case will be the shape of a sphere. So when we draw that, let's do that here, we make sure that we keep the charge right at the center of that imaginary sphere. So there's our Gaussian surface, and we make sure that the edge of the surface goes right to the point where we want to know the strength of the electric field. That's the key. Make sure the charge is at the center, and the edge of the surface is right where we want to find the electric field. If we want to find the electric field here, we have to draw a bigger Gaussian surface, making sure the surface goes to that point. In this case, again, a bigger surface again, make sure the Gaussian surface goes to that point. So now let's find E1. And we can do that as follows. We know that the flux to the surface is going to be the same everywhere, uh, regardless of the side of the surface. So that means that E dot A, E dot A is equal to the charge inside divided by epsilon sub naught, where epsilon sub naught is the permittivity of free space. So this is Gauss's law. Now we can put it into an integral format or we can write it like this because we can write it this way, presuming that the electric field is constant anywhere along the surface and that the charge is right at the center and that the electric field is perpendicular to the surface. So if the, if the electric field is perpendicular to the surface and the strength of the field is the same anywhere along the surface, then we can write Gauss's law in this format. And almost all cases will be that way. So what we need to do now is move the A down below so we have the electric field. E1 is going to be equal to Q inside divided by A1 times epsilon sub naught. The subscript 1 indicates we're going to find the electric field at this location and A1 is the surface area of that particular Gaussian sphere. So that can be written as Q inside divided by A which is 4 pi times R1 squared times epsilon sub naught. And then we plug in the correct values, we get the following. This is equal to 10 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs divided by 4 pi. The radius is 2 meters, we square that, and epsilon sub naught is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. That would be coulomb squared divided by newton meters squared. Like that, that's all in the denominator. So let's go ahead and see what that's equal to. 10 e to the 6 minus, divide by 4, divide by pi, and divide by 8.85 e to the 12 minus equals, hmm, I'll have to do that one again. Let me do it again. 10 e to the 6 minus equals, and there we go. That's about 22,500 newtons per coulomb. We could also make this a little bit easier by looking at the equation and realizing that 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught can be replaced by the constant k in Coulomb's law. We realize that k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. So 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught can be replaced by k. So we can write that E1 is equal to k times q inside divided by uh, R1 squared. So in this case, k is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared per coulomb squared. We multiply that times q inside, which is 10 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, 
and all divided by r1 squared, which would be 2 meters squared. And that gives us, let's see here, uh, that's 9e to the 9th times 10e to the 6th minus divided by 4. And again, 22,000, so that's equal to 22,500 newtons per coulomb. So see, either way will get you the correct answer. So now, you may say, well, how, what do I do when I want to find E2 and E3? Well, you just simply draw a different Gaussian surface. So to find the electric field strength at E2, we can say that E2 times area 2 is equal to Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. And so that means that E2 is equal to Q inside divided by area 2 times epsilon sub naught or that's equal to Q inside divided by area which is 4 pi times R2 squared times epsilon sub naught. And then 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught can be written as K times Q inside divided by R2 squared. And then when you plug in the numbers here to get the value, you get 9 times 10 to the 9th, 1 10, that's 10 times 10 to the minus 6, divided by R2, in this case will be 4 meters instead of 2 meters, so there'll be 4 squared, and you take that, divide by 4 equals, that'll give you 5,625 newtons per coulomb. And then again, if you want to find the electric field strength at E3 at this location right here, you draw a new Gaussian surface again, of course, I'm running out of room here, but you get the idea. Get a bigger surface, use the very same equation again. So now you say E3 is equal to Q inside divided by the area times epsilon sub naught. So now instead of using this equation, we use this equation, which is equal to, uh, that would be Q inside divided by 4 pi R3 squared times epsilon sub naught but 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught is equal to k, so this is equal to k q inside divided by r3 squared. So finally, e3 will be equal to k, uh, well, let me just plug in the numbers, that makes it a little bit easier. So that will be equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th, 10 times 10 to the minus 6, that's the number of coulombs on the charge, divided by, in this case, would be 6 meters squared. So this would be equal to, uh, let's see, uh, that would be 2,500, so E3 newtons per coulomb. And so we got E2, and we got E1. There we go. And that's how we use Gauss's law. Make sure the charge is right smack at the center of the Gaussian surface. Make sure that the Gaussian surface, the surface itself, is right on top of the point of interest where you want to find the magnitude of the electric field. And so no matter where the point is, you simply change the size of the surface to compensate for where the exact point is that you're trying to determine the electric field at. And that's how it's done. That's how we use Gauss's law. And you'll see there's all kinds of applications that makes it a lot easier to find the electric field for various geometric shapes and distributions of charge. And we'll show you all those examples in the videos to come.